good evening and welcome to our virtual sixth form evening. Um, we tried this a few, e few weeks ago with our year six uh, virtual open evening and we had a lot of success with it so we're trying it again tonight. I think the slight difference this time is the year 11s have already had the opportunity to come and speak to some of the staff. Um, this is obviously an additional offer to try and perhaps hit the parents and various other people that would like to know a little bit about our sixth form. So hopefully through the course of this evening you'll get to find out all the information you need in, in terms of making that decision about that sixth form offer. We believe our offer is really, really strong. I believe it's strong because not only do we offer lots and lots of subjects, uh, I think we offer 26 A-levels this year, we also offer that, that smallish sixth form, school sixth form experience and that incorporates all the pastoral care that I think sits behind what we believe are fantastic results that our school sixth form produces. Um, throughout the course of the evening you're going to hear lots from us and lots of different staff are going to contribute to this evening. Um, Mr Brocklehurst is going, to, is going to take over for myself. Um, you're also going to hear a little bit about our, about our Pathways offer and our Pathways offer is something that sits alongside our curriculum and hopes that hopefully offers that careers advice and guidance to some of our young people that are looking at doing a particular pathway and um, whether that be the law or medicine or the other pathway, pathways that we do. So we believe our offer is really strong. I'm very, very proud of everything our sixth form do and go on to achieve. Um, and I hope you find this evening really useful and it gets, gets you all the information you need. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Haunted Sixth Form's virtual um, open evening tonight. Um, just want to talk to you briefly about sort of the options at Haunted Sixth Form and why Haunty could be the, the right choice for you and for, for your child. Okay, so one of the key things is making sure you make an informed choice and, and knowing that you've got the right information and basing those judgments on the, the correct information. So why Haunty Sixth Form? Um, well, we've got a body of staff that have invested heavily in, in your sons and daughters over the last, last five years. Um, or for those students that are coming to us from elsewhere. You know, we've got a body of staff who are committed to helping students improve as best they can and to, to deliver results. We've got an excellent range of courses. We have in excess of, of 30, 30 level three courses on offer across a range of A-levels, BTECs, Cambridge Technicals. Um, we have personalised choices. So we don't have set option blocks to begin with. Uh, everything is very much based upon the information that the students give us to try and maximise um, each individual's opportunities. And one of the key things is, is our location. Um, certainly, you know, you've transported yourself here for the last five years. You know, it's quite convenient to get to and it certainly cuts down on the, the volume of um, time committed to, to commuting if you go elsewhere. We've got a wide range of subjects available um, and those subjects can fluctuate from year to year. Um, we've introduced criminology and textiles this year um, based upon um, student interest and student, student numbers. Uh, we have a wide range of enrichment opportunities that are on offer, um, whether that be in curriculum time or extracurricular in visits abroad. Hopefully when we can, we can get there again. So re results are important, um, you know, we have sort of last year's results, A star to, a star to B grades were 51.5%, A star to C was 73%. We use a system called ALPS, uh, which is graded 1 to 9, and for our quality indicator score, we're, we're a grade 2, which puts us in the, the top 10% nationally, and a grade 3 for um, progress, which puts us in the top 20% nationally. So. Um, for, for Hornsey, we do really well on that national stage. There's also a range of financial support available. Um, we run a scheme of bursaries that are based upon um, household income that students might be eligible for um, in terms of help and support in their, their education post-16. Um, we also offer a subsidy for transport. Um, Post-16 students travelling to Haunty will need to, to purchase a bus pass but we run a scheme to help subsidise the cost of that and we also have each of the students has a, an ID card which also doubles up as a student discount card so there's a number of local businesses in and around Haunty that offer our students a, a discount when they're, they're shopping locally. And then equally important is 
is preparing our students for, for where they go on to next. So we have, um, once the students leave us in year 13, they go on to a range of destinations, uh, whether that be in, into employment, into apprenticeships, or off to university. So we, we have students that go off to do a range of courses from astrophysics to maths to illustration, um, law, media studies. We have a whole range of the students going off to, to do a range of subjects and also to different different locations. So we have a number of students that stay locally. Um, we have a high percentage that like to stay, stay local and will go to Hull, York, Leeds, um, and stay fa fairly close, whereas others spread the spread the wings a little bit further and head off to sort of Liverpool, Northumbria, Newcastle, Brighton, London. So we have a, a wide range of subjects and students that go to to different places that we then embrace and bring back to help um, inform the choices of uh, the current sixth form as well. Okay, so hopefully you'll decide that Haunted School and Sixth Form is the place for you to continue your education post-16. Um, for our, our students in Year 11, we'll be conducting a range of one-to-one of inter -one interviews during the course of the, the next month or so. And then for students that are coming to us from, from elsewhere, we'll arrange some, some virtual interviews and hopefully some visits for you to come see us um, as soon as we can. Okay, take care. Students that come to us in sixth form have a great variety of choice of subjects to choose from. We offer A-levels in music technology and drama and theatre. And we also offer a suite of performing arts packages in acting and dance. Basically, we have something to sue any student depending on what they would like to go into within the arts. We also offer great extracurricular provision for those students that want to take advantage of performing arts here at school. So the subjects we offer, as you can see, are very diverse. I think you can kind of put them into two camps. We've got psychology, law, sociology and criminology, which are much more academic style of subjects, where you'll debate, you'll discuss, you'll learn about very different world topics. Great preparation for university. The other side of our, our faculty is media and photography. These are much more practical subjects. We've still got theoretical elements in there, particularly in the media studies course. But in both subjects, there's great opportunities to hone your practical skills as well. So as a science department, we obviously have to cover all the theoretical side of things to prepare you in answering your examinations. But we are also, um, they get a practical endorsement with every A-level that you do as well, as well as the BTEC. So the practicals range from dissecting skills in biology, using microscopes, um, through to uh, wave technology and chromatography. Lots of glassware practicals as well, linked in with the chemistry. Hopefully the, the promotional video of Haunted Six Form has given you a flavour of, of what we're about. And coming up next is um, a short section on our pathways. Uh, the members of staff that lead on those um, will tell you a little bit more about them in depth. Hi, I'm Rob Lichenko, Deputy Head Teacher at Haunted School, and I was responsible for putting together our Pathways programme. At Haunty, we recognise that some degree courses and career choices are particularly competitive and this is why we put together our Pathways programme as a result. Pathways programme consists of such events as meeting current professionals, 
um, discussing and debating topical issues within the field, help finding work experience placements and assistance with writing personal statements and university admission tests. We currently have pathways in the medical, legal and STEM field and we've got plans to add a couple more throughout this year in both sport and the creative industries uh, sector. We might not have been the first sixth form college to develop these kind of initiatives but we certainly think that our offer is one of the best in the area. Pathways programmes are meant to run alongside and complement your studies, not replace any of your A-levels and they're really a way of giving you a head start in your chosen career or with any university applications that you'll make. You're now about to hear a little bit about the medical, STEM and legal pathways from the teachers who run them. Hi, I'm Mr Hawkins and I'm running the legal pathway for you lot within sixth form um, and we'll be looking at getting you guys into future legal careers and onto university to study law and whatever it is that you want to do within the legal sector. So what we do on the legal pathway, we're going to hopefully focus on you guys that want to go into the legal profession. We will give you guidance with CVs, with university applications, with anything that you need to do to put you in place so that you can move on to that next step. We have got a great range of contacts to get you with uh, the right work experience if you need to. We're going to already have partnerships with York and with Hull University so that when we can, we'll have tours from them, they'll come and do workshops with us. We're looking at running national running as part of national competitions on a mock bar trial where you guys will get to play the defence or the prosecution and you become lawyers within yourself and it all ranges on what you guys want to do. I don't run a very organised thing, it is all to do with you guys running what you want. We'll put it and we'll tailor it to what you want and what helps you progress within the law sector and hopefully you find it useful and hopefully you sign up and want to do it going forward. So this is an introduction into the medical pathway by Mr Mayo and, and this is Hart. And what we um, are looking to cover in this pathway is um, lots of practicals and dissections and things which are very closely linked to um, certain careers. And uh, so this is mainly aimed at those that wanting to go into medicine based careers, so your doctors, your dentists, your veterinary surgeons. There will be aspects of the pathway that are applicable to those interested in nursing, midwifery and courses such as that as well. So the whole pathway is about developing new practical skills, looking at the sorts of things that are needed to get into these very competitive careers and trying to help you um, with, with the application for these, these, these careers. So as alongside the, the development of your practical skills, we'll be offering help with securing university places, so writing your UCAS applications and your personal statements. Uh, one of the key issues as well, especially for the medicine-based careers, is getting that work experience that you are needed to apply to university, so we'll try and help people secure those placements. And then in addition, you've got your admissions tests, which a lot of people don't think about in regards to applying for medicine courses. So we're going to help people in preparing and hopefully passing those admission tests as well. Hi, my name's Mr Napton and I just want to talk to you a little bit about the STEM pathway that is available for your A-level studies at HSLC. So there are two aims we are looking for for the STEM pathway. Number one is to support your applications with STEM careers and the second thing is to develop some of the skills you're going to need to go into those STEM fields. So the first thing we want to look at is if you've got an idea of the career you want to do, it's my job to support you into getting onto that path. So I will be looking at setting up some relevant work experience for you, putting in contact with companies that specialise in that field so you can get an idea of what you need to be doing in order to meet the criteria to go on and study that at university or an apprenticeship. If you're not really sure what you want to do um, when it comes to STEM but you definitely want to consider that as an option, it would be my job to open your eyes to some of the careers that are available, what sort of things you can do and the entry requirements that you would need in order to get on those certain careers. The second part of the STEM pathway is looking at developing some of the skills you need to be successful in a STEM career. Um, we look forward to seeing you in September. If you do have any questions, you are welcome to come and see me in room 40 or pop me an email. Um, that would be fantastic. And next on to Mr Salisbury, who's our progress leader for year 13, who will be talking to you about um, the university process, the UCAS process and what we do to help students with that and also Mrs Richardson who's our part of the sixth form team, a careers advisor, will be talking to you about careers and how we support students in sixth form. 
Hello there, my name is Mrs Salisbury and I am the Year 13 Progress Leader here at HSLC Sixth Form. As part of my role as Progress Leader, I work very closely with Mrs Richardson who is our Sixth Form Careers Advisor. And at the end of Year 12, we restructure all of our tutor groups. This is to ensure that all students are on the right pathway for where they would like to be in the future. Year 13 can be a very daunting year because not only have we got our A-levels coming up, but we've also thinking about our next steps and our futures. That journey actually begins right now. What I would like to speak to you about today is something called the Russell Group. Now the Russell Group is a group of 24 universities. Now these universities are seen as the top flight universities in the United Kingdom. They are very much in uh, research intensive universities and people aspiring to go to university, many people do think very carefully about do I want to go to a Russell Group University which could potentially open more doors for me in the future. What's important is that you start to think a little bit now about the steps that you would like to take. So if you are thinking about applying for university, maybe you've got a very, very fixed career in mind already, then I would urge you to look at their website. It's called www.informedchoices.ac.uk. This website was only launched in 2019, but it's a very, very good starting point to think about what A-levels you might want to take. Some degrees require you to have specific A-levels. For example, if you're thinking about um, architecture, engineering, they often require you to have maths or physics. Some degrees, actually, they're not necessarily bothered about which um, A-levels you've chosen to do, but some A-levels are seen as more preferential than others because of the skills that are involved. This website is a really good starting point for you. Okay, so if you've got a specific career in mind, please have a look at that website so that you can ensure that your A-level choices will help you on your journey. Here at HSLC, our previous students have gone on to a wide range of courses and a wide range of future careers. For example, we've had many, many students going on to study veterinary science, medicine, midwifery, which are all very difficult courses to get onto. We will do our best to support you on that journey. This year alone, we have a student that's gone on to study medicine locally. She worked extremely hard to get onto that course and we're extremely proud of what she's achieved. We also have another success story who's gone on to one of our Russell Group universities. This particular student did extremely well, achieving the equivalent of five A-stars at A-level, two of which he actually sat whilst he was in Year 12. Whatever you're thinking of doing, we will be here to support you. I'm going to hand you over now to Mrs Richardson, who is our careers advisor here in the sixth form, and she will give you a little bit more information about some of the further packages on offer. Hi, my name is Mrs Richardson and I'm HSLC's Careers Advisor and also Careers Advisor for Sixth Form as well. We offer lots of support and guidance for students in helping them make decisions for their future. This can be vary from one-to-one -one personal guidance sessions with myself as a Careers Advisor, helping you to perhaps understand your strengths and uh, realise what sort of career aspirations you may have. Um, we give all students in Year 12 the opportunity to undertake a week of work experience. Again, the idea of, of that is so that they can perhaps try out um, a career or role that they perhaps aspire to. Um, and also to give them some valuable experience that they can then use um, within personal statements, their CV or any future applications to university. We also have lots of links uh, with local uh, businesses and um, training providers, colleges and universities that we regularly invite into sixth form to speak to students, um, again which will help them make decisions for their future. Okay that's all from me, um, if you have any questions about our careers provision in sixth form you can always drop me an email on careers at hslc.co.uk and I look forward to seeing you in September. And some of the best ambassadors that we have for, for Haunted Sixth Form are our students themselves. So moving on to some videos of days in the life of our students and what they 
the usual days in compass and then hopefully if technology permits we'll move on to our live question and answer session following the videos take care Hi guys, this is a day in our life. Hi, I'm Jacob and I study maths, physics and chemistry. Uh, I'm Joe and I also study maths, physics and chemistry. So I study maths, biology and classics. And I study future studies, art and literature. Uh, usually before break at sixth form we'd usually have a law which at the moment we're studying criminal law. My timetable varies, but usually period one in the morning we have a free period, which is good because we get to have a lion. And then after that most mornings we have physics and we've got Mr. Pearson. And at the moment, as you'll see on the video, we've been discharging capacitors. Well, usually in the mornings I have my theatre studies lessons. Hi, we're just in theatre and we're just rehearsing our advice piece. In five weeks we have an exam for it and it's going great. Um, and then we normally have break after that and I just spend it with my friends in the common room. At break time, we always get something to eat. Yvonne serves up some tasty toast for us. We sit in the common room. And then after that, usually we have chemistry with either Mr. Bateson or Mr. Napton. And we do lots of practicals and it's pretty fun to be fair. After break, usually I've got psychology where at the moment we're studying clinical psychology. Then I have my literature lessons and at the moment we're studying The Great Gatsby um, and we're just going through a couple of scenes at the moment and annotating them. Then at lunchtime we go get some food and because we have so many free periods we could we have the time and flexibility to go and get food wherever we want. And then we get to lunchtime um, and normally I just go downtown with my friends. And we've got our student discount cards so we can get a discount at a lot of the local businesses. After lunch, um, we've both got maths usually haven't we? Carl, how's maths going? It's going alright, cheers Joe. Do you want to see what I'm doing Joe? And it's interesting, but it can be really soft. So here we are in maths. Cal, what are we doing? Um, functions and graphs. That's what we're doing. In the afternoon after lunch, I have art. Um, and I really like this period just because it's my time to just relax and get on with work. And I normally have a free period and then I have classics after school and at the minute we're studying about Romans and Greeks. Some days after period five, we can stay behind and do extra study in the quiet room if we feel like that's necessary or on Fridays, Friday night football against the teachers. Oh, this is what we do on the on School 3G. Take a look. That was a day in our life. Thanks for watching. Okay, good evening everybody. Um, it's certainly a privilege once again to be beamed into uh, people's front rooms um, or wherever you're watching us tonight. Um, we hope you found the videos useful tonight so far. What I've got now is my two expert panellists, Miss Salisbury and Mr Brocklehurst. I've said all along this, I really, really like this because I get the chance to play Gary Lineker and I'll leave you to decide which one of these two is Alan Shearer. Um, what we've done, what we've tried to do is we've, take, we've taken questions throughout the course of the week um, and the aim tonight is to try and give you a little bit more detail that perhaps has existed outside of the videos um, there might be just more specific questions and hopefully my two panellists tonight will be able to answer those for you. To the Year 11s out there at the moment, we are missing you massively. Um, we want you back in school. We're looking forward to welcoming you, welcoming you back into school next week. Please keep working hard. I'm getting really, really good reports that you're buying into all the online learning and we need you back as soon as possible. So please keep working hard and hopefully tonight we'll start to answer some of those questions for you. So, my first question tonight is, and I think this came in at the first part of the week, um, and it's a really, really good question, is how will the teaching style differ uh, from being in the main body of the school? And I, and I think Mr Brocklehurst is going to take that yeah. one for us. Yeah, so I think um, in terms of teaching, I think one, one of the things that students find when they, when they join us in sixth form is that we have smaller class sizes. Okay, so with those smaller class sizes, you can develop a, a different relationship with your teachers. Um, it's a bit more relaxed and it's, it's a very supportive atmosphere that people are in. So they have those positive relationships. You know, you, for the vast majority of you, your teachers will have taught you for, for the previous five years and are heavily invested in, in your future. So with those smaller class sizes and sort of treating you more as, as young adults, 
and giving you a bit more independence and, and responsibility for, for your learning. Um, it tends to sort of Absolutely. emerge as quite a, a strong sort of student-teacher relationship. Okay. And I think the next one sort of links very, very closely, and perhaps I can kick us off with this one, because the question is, what is the teacher turnover rate? And I know Mr Brocklehurst is going to pick this one up for us, but I think that perhaps is a, is a big part of my job. My job, um, or one of my jobs within school, um, is to try and get, ensure that the very best staff come and work with us and that we retain the very best staff. And, and I think, uh, in certainly my tenure in charge at the school, I think that perhaps is one of the things I'm most proud of. I think I've amassed a, a great group of teachers that make a difference to the lives of all our students, but perhaps particularly that sixth form group of staff we've now got. Mr Brocklehurst, have I probably missed something there that you might want yeah, to add? Well, I, I think probably, um, for those of you watching tonight, I've probably taught a number of you. Um, when, I'm in talking parents days. there. Talking <laughs> to par parents, yeah. So I haven't taught, taught a number of parents, and I think we... No, we have quite a settled body of staff. Um, staff turnovers reasonably low, but we, we do work at. Um, you no, know, when we have got some transition, we, we work to make that as seamless as possible. So, for example, um, we're just our law teacher is just coming back off off maternity leave. The, the law teacher we had to cover the maternity. You know, there was a period where they overlapped and they worked together for a couple of weeks before there was that handover. And then likewise, as the, the law teachers come back off maternity, they've had a period of a couple of weeks to, to hand over to make sure that there's a, a seamless a transition as we can make it. So I think that's, that's to the benefit yeah, of the students. Absolutely. Okay, the next one again, and I, I think in some ways the, 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 life, the day in the life of the students video answered this in, in part, but we can give perhaps a little bit more detail. It's, it's what subject guidance is available outside of the timetabled lesson time. Yeah. And again, Mr Rockless, are you going to do that one? Yeah, I think there's, um, with, within pretty much all the subjects, as we said, no, the teachers are, yeah. are very approachable, they've got your best interests at heart, um, the available to pop to pop and see yeah. they'll if they can't sort of deal with the problem there and then they'll arrange a time for you to come back to meet um you know contact face to face or via email lots of support sessions being yeah. run sort of joint free periods after school um i mean we're, we're sat here in the in the quiet room in the the um, study room where you know students can come in the first ones start arriving at, at 7 30 in the morning and the last ones left last night at seven o'clock as I did so you know so there's a wide range of things there to, to offer support for students. Okay we are going to bring Miss Salisbury in, in a minute and um, she has blessed her this morning she's told me she's got to done her hair especially for tonight so I'm definitely going to bring her in. Me and Mr Brocklehurst clearly didn't bother um, but the next one again I'm going to direct to Mr Brocklehurst is what happens if my child it's a great question uh, does not pass their GCSEs hopefully that will not be the case can they retake them when they join the sixth form? Yeah, I think one one of the things that we we do offer is you no, know, we've got a, a vested interest in in your sons and daughters and, and their education, um, and so we take very much a, an individual pers yeah. personal yeah. approach. You know, we do offer resits in English language and maths. Um, individual subjects have their own subject requirements, but if, you know, if, if you've got a particular flair. For a subject, then you know we have those conversations uh, with the subject leaders, and I think it's one of the key things is you know having the right number of passes to enable you to, yeah. to access the the level three courses. So so we do our utmost to make sure that we we can accommodate um, everybody, and, and we do appreciate that you know haunted sixth form isn't for everybody, and and if it's not quite appropriate for you, then you know we will help help source alternatives. So um, to help you with that, because um, ultimately it's the informed choice of making the right choice for yourselves. Okay, one for Miss Salisbury now then. Is there any financial help with the buses or books? And we've combined two questions here. here and what is the 16 to 19 bursary and how do we get it? Well, the answer to the first question is yes, there is. There is some help. Um, we do have a bursary scheme here in the sixth form um, and we also have a bus pass scheme. So obviously when you reach 16, um, when you get on the school bus, it does cost money. You do have to pay for a bus pass, but we do have a scheme basically where we will reimburse partially uh, the cost of the bus pass 
to you. So there is a form that you fill in when you start in September um, and obviously that gets processed and when we get those forms in we can work out basically how much we're able to give each student towards their bus pass reimbursement and that's paid in three instalments across the year. So it's based on attendance as well. Um, so obviously if you're attending your lessons etc you will get that reimbursement. The bursary scheme that we offer here is means tested, so it's not available to everybody, um, but there is more information about that on our school website in the parents section. Um, but if your household income is less than £28,000, then in theory you should be eligible for something. Yeah. And that bursary obviously is paid regular payments um, towards living costs, etc. As well as there being a pot of money available for help with specialist equipment, if you're doing photography for example, um, or towards books, etc. Okay, thank you. Just a, a bit of a subsidiary question really, Miss, on the buses. The question is, do we apply for the bus pass when we arrive in September? No, your actual bus pass you do need to actually apply for before you uh, commence sixth form. So around the summertime you actually apply for the bus pass through the East Riding Council. So exactly the way you would have got a bus pass if you currently use the buses, you apply through the council. Um, and it has to be paid for, um, but then we obviously reimburse yep. the, to, towards the cost of that. Okay. And I think just, just to chip in there as well, that we, we are looking for um, to run a bus from, from Beverley next year. Yeah, absolutely, so yeah. So which that, again so might, provision, might help with some people uh, out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so, good point. Um, this is one, and again, perhaps we should uh, have Mr Atkinson here tonight, who, who is our timetabler in school. And, and the question is, um, are A-level choices restricted by option blocks or is there a free choice? Yeah. So, Mr well, Rocklest? Well, hopefully, coming to, to our Year 11s next week, and for those of you that, that are looking in from elsewhere, you know, once we've got your details, we, we can send this information out, but... Initially, the process is that we ask the students what subjects they would like to study. Um, and then through that, through the responses, we then generate the option blocks that we, we use to then determine the timetable for, for next year. So every year, uh, there are some slight fluctuations because each, each cohort of students has different strengths, different interests. And so there is some, some slight leeway every year and chops and changes. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just coming in there, I think uh, Mr Atkinson, who I mentioned a few minutes ago, is a brilliant, brilliant timetabler um, who goes above and beyond to try and ensure that everybody gets their best fit. I think Miss O'Connor this year has tried to kill him because um, <laughs> she's got him to rewrite the timetable because of various sort of issues COVID-wise we've had to face. But again, if anybody can do it, uh, certainly Mr Atkinson can. Um, th this is a very sort of subject specific one, but again, I think it could be broadened out to, to a, other subjects as well. And again, I think Mr. Brockles is going to take this one. Do I have uh, do I have to have studied business studies at GCSE in order to be able to study at A levels? I suppose we could perhaps broaden out to other subjects yeah. as well, couldn't we? Yeah, I, I think for certain subjects, um, doing GCSE would be certainly a precursor. So, for example, A level French, if you've not done GCSE French, would be uh, an absolute non-starter um, and for certain subjects you know having um, maths for example you know having a good grade in maths is a precursor for going on to do a level maths but there are a range of subjects business studies being one of them uh, we've had students that you know have picked up we've got new subjects criminology uh, we've got a number of students this year who've picked up textiles that haven't done done it before so it's very much on an individual basis and if you look online at the prospectus it has the the course requirements in yeah. there yeah. Um, but you know very much if you've got a flair for something and you know we are quite conscious that not all schools will offer the same gccs and you've had sort of to take some choices very early on that you might have just developed an interest in something yeah. um over the last couple of years yeah Okay, the next one for uh, for Miss Salisbury now is, um, and again, I think she answered it in part during her uh, sort of pre-recorded video. But again, it talks about what percentage of our, of your students go on to higher education 
after leaving the sixth form? And I know the stats are really impressive because she works incredibly hard at this floor. Uh, well, it does vary year on yeah. year, in all honesty, depending on the cohort. Um, for the past few years, it's been sort of in the 50s and 60%. Uh, so, for example, 2020, so our most recent year group, it was 58% that actually went on to university. And the remainder have all gone on to um, apprenticeships, looking at employment. We've got some that are taking a gap year because obviously with the current situation, they're, yep. they're thinking a little bit more about actually, shall I just wait until I know what's going to be happening before making those decisions? So it does vary, but it's usually somewhere between 50 and 60% there. Yeah, I think just on that again, I think a young lady who studied with us in the sixth form last year um, has chose because of the COVID situation to, to defer a place at uni we've actually offered her a job and she's, she's helped to produce some of the videos for tonight. So again, I think it's because of the circumstances uh, why people are perhaps deferring at the moment at these sort of very, very uncertain times. But um, next question then again for you, Miss, is do universities accept BTECs? Yeah, well, the short answer to that is yes, they do. Um, it's very important to look very carefully if you've got a career in mind at what they do require. Um, as I mentioned on one of the videos earlier that you'll have seen, um, if you're looking at something like medicine, then a straightforward A-level is always going to be more preferential to a BTEC. So it's important to do your research. But the majority of universities do accept BTECs. A level three BTEC is the equivalent of an A-level. So in terms of generating UCAS points, a merit at BTEC is the equivalent of a C at A-level. So in, in the most circumstances, it makes no difference. Okay, so it's more just those more specific courses, yeah. really. Lovely. Right, the next one again for you, Mrs. Um, do you offer any, any help uh, to students that don't want to go to university and, and don't know what they want to do at the end of it? And that's, I think it's a really applicable question because we are facing really uncertain times. And not everybody wants to go off to uni. There are lots of in-house sort of uh, firms that are offering internships at different places and various things. So... I think it's something we have first, Miss, so can you... Yeah, well, we, I, I believe we've got a very good programme here at Hornsey School, which actually begins way back in year 12, where we're starting to think about what is it that you would like to do. Um, and we do restructure the tutor groups to make sure that everybody's on what they think is their pathway, but we know that that can always change. So we're always here, and we're yeah. always ready to adapt to that change. Um, so we have a bespoke tutor group in year 13 that's specifically for students that are not thinking about university, that are looking at apprenticeships or employment or generally have no idea what they want to do, which some people don't have no, any idea what they want to do. Um, and with that particular tutor group, uh, last year we were very lucky that we could get some outside input there uh, who came and worked with our students on a weekly basis in putting together CVs and a package for them. Um, the tutor is brilliant at helping with writing letters. We've got Mrs Richardson, who's our careers advisor. So there's lots and lots of things available for our students to kind of give them that guidance that they need. Um, we also have a futures event in year 12. Um, obviously, it's this year we had to kind of do it slightly differently in that we did some things during tutorial time. Um, but usually what we would do is we'd invite visitors in, some of our past students, for example, that have gone on to do very different careers, um, some are very successful apprenticeships, um, some that have actually gone on to university, etc. And we bring some of our past students back um, and some of the kind of the national uh, careers advice, for example, um, and they come in and, and they actually help students to start thinking yeah. about that process. Absolutely. And again, I think just coming in on that, Miss, I think one thing that COVID has done, it's restricted us doing lots of things. So again, in an ideal world tonight, I'd have you all, all in the hall and I'd be talking to you about various things, different things about our sixth form. But what this, what, what COVID has forced us to do, and I'm really proud of this, is, is sort of broaden those boundaries and push those boundaries in terms of those sort of visitors we can get in school. So I think one of the challenges we've faced in the past is getting people to perhaps travel back up from London, but we mm. can do that via these yeah. different sort of forums now. So perhaps it gives us more opportunities. So while it's taken a, taken certain things away from us, it's perhaps given us other opportunities. So we'll look to try and push that where we can as well. Again, I think you've answered the next one in part, Miss, again, but it says what careers advice is available and how it is and, and how is how is it delivered? So obviously I've mentioned the Futures yep. event and obviously the restructuring of the tutor groups. We are very lucky in that we have Mrs Richardson who works um, predominantly in the sixth form building. So she's able to meet quite regularly with our sixth form students and we can book appointments with her yep. to kind of get that ball rolling. Uh, one of the things that we've bought into this year is a package called Unifrog. 
um, which isn't just about going to university. It has lots and lots of different things on there and we're kind of rolling it. We started with the sixth form and we're going to be rolling it back through the years um, because it starts to build that pattern. It starts to build that programme. So that's kind of part of our package as well. Um, uh, and we've obviously mentioned the tutor group yep, as well and absolutely. the restructuring of the tutor group. I mean, I think that, that career side of things <coughs> is such an important part of that school. And I know I, I've talked with the senior team. If I had a big pot of money that I could spend, I would employ far more careers advisors to work with our young people much further down the school. And again, the, the lady who works quite closely with me, Mrs Ashton, she she's training up to work alongside... Um, Mrs Richardson, so we, we're sort of doubling our capacity in terms of that, and it will also give her a bit of respite away for me, which I know she'd, uh, she'll she'll look forward to. Um, next question again, I think going back to Mr Brockles now, is what is independent learning? It's an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, that appears on the year 12 and 13 timetables, and what are we supposed to do with this time and where? I'm sure Mr Brockles has got a very clear <laughs> answer yeah. for us. Yeah, well, I think one, one of the things that... The year 12 students, when they join us in September, find very different is that in year 11, you have five lessons a day, five days a week, and you're always going to, to your next lesson. Whereas when you come to sixth form, you have some independent time. Yeah. So you, sometimes you might have five lessons a day, sometimes you might have six lessons during the day, but quite often you know, you'll have two or three lessons uh, during the day, and then you've got a couple of periods where you've got some non-contact time. Um, and part of the reason you've got that is it's that level of independence that you've got to do. Okay, we talk about the golden hour of yeah. for every hour in the classroom, ideally you should be doing an hour's work outside as well. Um, so on your, on your timetable, you'll see that there's some study periods put down there, just to give you a gentle nudge and a reminder that there is some, some work to do. It's not just a three-hour lunchtime. Um, and we also have on the timetable, uh, you'll have a, a designated Unifrog slot, yep. uh, which is time for you to, to work on the Unifrog website. At times, we'll set you set tasks to do, to complete, um, but it's just there to help guide you and keep you on track and keep you up. Just going to say on that as well, I think if you have Mr Jenkins as well, you sometimes <laughs> have up to 10, 12 lessons a day. Yeah. So there's yeah. all that sort of stuff to look forward to along the way as well, yeah. folks. Uh, next question again, and, and it's something I'm particularly proud of again, and I, I perhaps will chip in with a part of the answer here, is what percentage of students start the sixth form but fail to sit their exams as they finish the course? Again, I, I'm a big believer, and I think you know Mr Brockles certainly shares his philosophy, as does Miss, in that we believe in giving our young people a chance to, to give it a real go. We'll try and help them and guide them, but there are a few occasions where we, I'm a, 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 where we do have to say, you know, I'm sorry, perhaps this isn't the best place for you, but we, we exhaust just about everything before we get to that point. Again, I, don't, I, I might have stolen yeah, your no, there, sir, well, I think we, bits to throw in. I think we have a very small percentage of students that don't, don't make it through to the end. Um, I think our, our overall pass rate um, at the end of year 13 is, is 99% or 99 point something percent. Um, so we, we probably have um, one or two grades across the whole of the sixth form in, in the summer results that we're not quite um, as happy with as the, the results aren't what they could have been. Um, and part of that is, you know, quite often they're not unexpected. We will, you know, if the students are working with us and trying their best, then we will give them that opportunity it would be very easy to say, I'm sorry, but you know, we're not going to enter you because yeah. it's going to diminish our, our results. We will give people every opportunity yeah. to get the success sorry. that they want. Yeah. Um, and I think those that do leave us during the course of sixth form, um, you know, often leave with very positive destinations in mind. So, you know, students that leave us uh, tend to be going off to start an apprenticeship joining the armed forces, going off to employment. So we, we tend not to lose them off into, into the abyss and with, with nothing to go to, we will sort of work with students, those that have expressed an interest in leaving, we work very hard to make sure that they're, yeah. they're moving on to something really positive, whether that be a college course somewhere else. And likewise, you know, we appreciate Haunty's not for everybody, um, and students go elsewhere, but you know, we have a number of students 
that then return back to us. Yeah, we do. So that they'll go off to college and realise it's not quite for, that, for them. Um, and this year, you know, we've had a number of students that have come back from a range of colleges to join us in year 12, uh, whether that be sort of two, three, four, five, six weeks in. And we've also got a number of students that have been off and done a year at college elsewhere and realised that, you know, the experience they had um, wasn't quite what they expected or they didn't have the range of courses and have come back yeah. and rejoined us um, partway through the sixth form experience to make sure that, you know, they could keep their options going for those future careers that they've got in mind. Yeah. And again, I think that links to the answer that Miss gave us a few minutes ago about that careers advice really linking it. If people are leaving, we're trying to get them on, on the most applicable pathway for that particular young person, mm. which I think enhances that sort of destination data, which we're really proud of. Um, the next and final question, unless there's any more coming, coming in this evening, is it, it talks about the extracurricular opportunities available. And I think those young people, I know we've got some people from outside of our school community joining us tonight, but anybody who's been through Hornsey right from sort of year seven will know that we run more trips, extracurricular clubs than, than any other school out there. And again, it's something that myself and all the staff are really, really proud of. Um, Again, so do you want to pick that one yeah. up for us? Well, I think with the extracurricular stuff, I mean, obviously we've got sports teams, um, so when we can we can play competitive sports again against other institutions, we'll do that. But, you know, at the minute, the the, um, the sixth form footballers are very keen to, to keep playing. Um, they take on the staff on a, on a Friday night um, when we can. Um, also with the Pathways events, you know, there's lots of things that happen out of hours with the Pathways I know I went across to, to biology the other week and there was um, a range of dissections going on. Um, so not necessarily for the, the faint-hearted, but it was, um, it was the students were, were fully enjoying it. And then, you know, lots of trips that happen mm. a, across a range of subjects. Um, so whether that be with performing arts, going to local theatres, all the way across to, to trips to New York, with history, going to... Um, sort of Greece, Rome, they've been to Russia in the past. You know, so there's a whole range of different activities that go on. Maths have been to, to Amsterdam and to Italy. So there's, there's a whole range of sort of international visits as well as sort of domestic ones. And I suppose the, the, the big feather in the cap that we're hoping to, to get back to as soon as we can is we have our, our sort of trip to Cambodia and Thailand that um, you know, is available sort of commercially through other channels, mm -hmm. but Mr. Jenkins does a really good job of sort of arranging it in-house yeah. and make it really affordable, where you know the students go and spend just over two weeks in Cambodia and Thailand and spending some time sort of teaching in little village schools. And when they're, when they're not teaching in the village schools, they then go on and they're building some, some infrastructure, yeah. they build toilets. Yeah. They built dining shelters for, um, for the local villages, so that's a, a really worthwhile experience. And I don't know if you want to. Yeah, well, I was very to fortunate that, to go on the very first trip to Cambodia um, with the school, and it was an amazing experience. And it's something, as I say, we're hoping that we can get back to yeah. doing that in the future. Um, and it's a fantastic experience. Um, it's very humbling, and as I said, you know, people pay. Uh, vast amount more than, than we can run it for to go on these kind of trips um, and it's a fantastic experience to be able to talk about on applications for jobs, apprenticeships etc mm -hmm. and those skills, those kind of um, being away from home, that, that you know honing those skills yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah. fantastic opportunity. Yeah. And I think we've had a number of students that haven't been on the visit have then sort of gone off and got that Done travel book yeah. Yeah. and so in, in a gap year have, have gone off and, and sort of done a great deal of travelling um, yeah. on the back of that. And again, I think just on that, uh, Miss was right, she was on the first trip to Cambodia. Uh, each year Mr Jenkins goes and he keeps coming back as well, so that's always a bonus for us. But again, that, that's the end of the, uh, the sort of formal questions tonight. So again, I think it probably just falls to me to really sum things up. Again, if I was to sort of summarise tonight, really, and why, why we get fantastic results at school, and Mr Brockles went through the stats in his little video earlier on, we get brilliant results. But again, these, these things that I think underpin that, and I mentioned it in my little introduction, 
I think the things that in, uh, underpin the fantastic results is that we have brilliant teachers. We have a fantastic set of staff, both teaching, non-teaching, support staff that work incredibly hard on your behalf to try and ensure that you get those very, very best results. But again, I think there's something that perhaps even underpins that, and it is linked to the quality of the staff that we've got. It's those really, really positive relationships we've got. Um, I, I believe we know you really, really well. We're able to talk about those sort of bespoke careers that you might want to go on to. Perhaps the, that's the advantage of our school sixth form over the, some of the big institutions out there at the moment. And, and again, our sixth form is growing, but it will always be that personal touch to, to, to you and to guide you onto that next step that as you enter that sort of next stages of your, of your life. So uh, I hope tonight has provided you with all that information. Again, I think right the way through this, we've said that if people, if we've not answered anything or people have been shy and coming forward with a question, then please come and seek one of us out and we will do whatever we can to answer those questions. And again, I think again, where I started really, it's to the year 11s, uh, whether you be with us at the moment or, or in another school, please keep working really, really hard. Uh, please keep doing your bit. Please, please keep working with the staff because whatever happens throughout the course of this year, we will need that evidence, whether we face the exams or we go to some sort of other system to try and give you the very, very best grades we possibly can. So again, good luck. And I look forward to seeing all of my Year 11s back next week.